In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the relationship between cells, tissues, and whole systems. And uh, as our example of this, we're going to use uh, plants. So let's uh, consider, for example, uh, what are some of the advantages of being multicellular. Over on the left here, we see a, a single-celled uh, critter. This is a, a, a euglena, and he's sort of a plant. He's got uh, chlorophyll inside of him, as you can see by the green. He's also got this whip-like flagella up here, which indicates that's kind of more like an animal. A at any rate, uh, he does all of life's jobs all inside of his one single cell. So why are some uh, living things multicellular? Well, there's, there's some advantages to being multicellular. One is a division of labor. Instead of one cell that has to do everything, you can uh, now divide your labor and you can get cells that specialize and so different cells can do different jobs. Uh, you can also achieve size advantages as well. For example, a unicellular uh, animal or plant can only be so big because he has to obey that, that surface area to volume ratio that we talked about previously. Whereas, of course, if you're multicellular, you can get to be quite huge, uh, like a tree over here. There's also the idea of the interdependence of cells. Um, so, for example, if you're a multicellular uh, organism and you lose a few cells or a few cells get damaged, that doesn't mean the entire organism dies. They can often be replaced. Of course, if you're single cellular, that would be the end of it. So let's have a look at plants and take a bit of a closer look here. And uh, when we look at plants and ha have a look at its basic anatomy, uh, we can see that uh, we can divide plants into several specialized different sections here. So for example, uh, we can consider the root system, which is underground, versus the shoot system, which is above ground. Um, and so, as you probably know, plants have a, a main root that runs down the center. They may have lateral or side roots that branch off to the side. And to increase their surface area and their ability to absorb, they may have uh, many, many millions of little root hairs. When we look at the above surface portion of the plant, what you and I usually see, we often see a very, very large uh, stem. Uh, and of course, the plant has leaves. These leaves branch off of what's called a node. Uh, and in between these nodes, we have what's called uh, an internode here. Um, leaves, of course, have a very large surface to area to volume ratio to achieve their, uh, their desired effect of absorbing a lot of uh, solar radiation and doing photosynthesis. Of course, plants may also produce specialized uh, seeds or fruit, depending upon what species they are. Uh, if we have a look inside plants, we realize that they too also have internally different cells for different jobs. So for example, here is a slice taken from the, uh, the stem. And if we look at a cross section of the stem, we see that it's made of several different types of tissue. It has an epidermis that goes around the outside to protect it from the elements. Uh, inside it has a cork or cortex. Uh, we also have these little bundles here called vascular bundles that contain specialized tissue called xylem and phloem. And these are used for the uh, transportation of uh, nutrients, both water and, and sugar that's created, and a whole lot of undifferentiated cells here in the middle called the, the pith. Uh, if we look at roots and take a cross section of the root, we see that same sort of specialization. Uh, once again, we do see this xylem and phloem tissue, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Looking inside of a leaf, again, we can see that it's very, very specialized. It has a, a cuticle which may be uh, waxy, and this would prevent water loss. Uh, from evaporating from the leaf. It has a definite upper layer, an upper epidermis, uh, and a lower epidermis, sort of like a sandwich. In between we have uh, the palisade cells here who do a lot of the photosynthesis. We also have these bundles of xylem and phloem again as we've seen in, in other sections of the plant. We have a lot of air spaces in here. This is where the, uh, the CO2 gets in and the oxygen gets out. And they get in and out through these specialized cells here called guard cells. So as we said before, you can basically break a plant down into two major systems, what's called the shoot system that you see above ground and the root system, which of course is below ground. And they have certain functions that they carry out. The shoot system, for example, takes care of the problem of photosynthesis, using sunlight to manufacture energy, uh, reproduction, making fruit, for example, and flowers, storage, uh, transport of nutrients, Hormones are also produced here. Plants have hormones that regulate their growth. Down in the root system, the functions we have there is, well, number one, anchorage. It holds the plant in place. Absorption of water and nutrients out of the soil. They also do storage, especially roots like, say, potatoes. Transportation is involved, and some hormones are produced down here, too. Now let's take a little uh, closer look at uh, a cross-section of a plant here. And so taking a simple cross-section of this plant, we see that it definitely has this uh, 
this outer tissue, this epidermis that protects it from the outside world. It has these undifferentiated cells that uh, are called ground tissue. Um, and then in the center of this particular plant, we see that it has vascular tissue. Now, you and I have vascular tissue. We call these, uh, we call these arteries and veins inside of our body. In a plant, they're called xylem and phloem. But like all vascular tissue, they transport liquids. And the vascular tissues of xylem and phloem are also responsible for transporting different kinds of liquids uh, both up and down the plant. We'll have a closer look at that right here. So if we uh, go into our, our plant stem and have a look at this xylem and phloem, what we see is, is this. Uh, we often see the phloem arranged closer towards the outside edge of the plant, and we have the xylem towards the, the inside. Uh, and what they basically do is sort of illustrated over here. Your xylem cells mainly are involved in the transportation of water upward. And so xylem is basically bringing water from the roots up to the other parts of the plant above the surface. And xylem cells are interesting in the fact that uh, they're actually dead cells. Uh, the cells grow, they die, they hollow out, and they, they become like straws, very, very thin and narrow straws that allow them to raise water up. To take care of the nutrients that are manufactured in the leaves, the leaves uh, manufacture glucose uh, through the process of photosynthesis, we have the, the phloem, which basically transports the, the sugar that is manufactured in the leaves downwards to other parts of the plant for storage. And as the phloem is on the outside of the plant, this is where, for example, on maple trees, you would, uh, you would tap in a little tube and you would maybe extract some of that sap from the phloem. And basically, when you concentrate that, that's what maple syrup is. Um, something else that's rather interesting too, since that phloem is on the outside, if you strip off the bark in a perfect ring around a tree, uh, that'll probably kill it because if you take away the plant's phloem cells, it can't transport the sugar that it manufactures in its leaves uh, down for storage and, and that'll soon result in the death of the tree. Having a little closer look at the xylem and the phloem over here, uh, once again we see that these, uh, these xylem cells are very long and they're called tracheids. So you want to learn that name. Uh, and this is basically what you might call the, the wood of the plant. Whereas the phloem is a little bit different, these are made up of what are called sieve plate cells that have these sieves on the end of them where the material travels through. And because these cells are so incredibly specialized, they typically have to have a companion cell running along beside of them. And the companion cell takes care of all the life processes that the, uh, the phloem cells are too specialized to perform. Of course, we can look at other types of cell plant uh, tissues as well. Here we see a scanning electron microscope of root hairs, which really shows how we get this incredible surface area. And here we see over here some leaf epidermis, which also shows these guard cells that control uh, how CO2 can get in to the leaf and how oxygen uh, can get out.